The same thing with sin. You can't solve sin. You can't solve trauma. You can't solve pain. You can't solve hurt on your own. People try, but it leads nowhere good. Leads nowhere good. But when you come to Jesus on his terms, which are humility, humility, that's all he's looking for. Humility and faith. Humility. Can you be humble enough to admit that you need God's help? Can you be humble enough to admit that you're not the center of the universe? That's the question. Can you be humble enough? Nobody likes proud people, but then they can't see their own pride when they look at themselves in the mirror. Everybody out here has a pride issue. Pride. You see, Satan fell from God's presence due to pride. Man and woman rebelled against God due to pride. And the thing that keeps people today away from Jesus is pride. And I'm not talking about LGBTQ pride. I'm talking about pride. I'm talking about pride. Love of self and not being able to, to receive truth. Not being willing to change. God's just looking for people to be willing to look at the truth and to change. My guy with the sunglasses, what do you think of what I'm preaching? Amen? You believe it? Praise God. Amen. See, God, God's looking to change lives. What will it take for God to change your life? What will it take for Jesus to change your life? You know, just yesterday, just yesterday, I was praying for my friend's mom. She's lived a rough life. God totally changed her life yesterday. Set her free from things that too personal for me to even share. But here's the thing, when you're a college student, when you're a college student, you think, oh, I got all the time in the world to figure this out. The truth is you don't have much time actually at all. The Bible says that life is like a vapor. Life is like a vapor. One minute, you're gonna be a freshman, the next you're gonna be a senior. One minute, you're gonna be in your 20s, and then all of a sudden you'll be like, wow, I'm actually 30 years old. I'm starting to get old. I'm starting to see some gray hair on my head. The truth is this. Time is the most valuable thing you have, and my challenge to you today is to consider how are you using it? How are you using it in light of eternity? You see, there is actually an eternity to be spent with God or an eternity to be spent in hell. And God gives us this time that we have every single day and every single moment as opportunities of how we will determine our eternal destiny. Guys, what do you think about what I'm preaching? Right here. What? No, we're good. Why? Are you good with God? No. Then you're not good. You're, you're in great danger. See, time is something that each of us only has a limited amount of. Nobody here knows their expiration date. Guy right here in the blue shirt drinking the smoothie. You have an expiration date. Everybody has an expiration date. And when you die, you don't just stay buried. Your consciousness will spend eternity somewhere. You will appear before God. The Bible says it's appointed unto men and to women once to die and then judgment. You see, this life is not just a carefree, have fun life. This life is about doing something with it to honor God. Doing something with the very life that God has breathed in you to honor Him. Now, the tragedy is that so many people take the very life that God has given them and they curse God with their life. How should God feel about that? How should God feel about that? Can you take the photo? I, can you just take it up me? Is that okay? Uh, can you ask somebody else to do it? Huh? Please, I'm a Christian. Uh, no, ask somebody else. Just, I don't want somebody saying that I took your phone or this or that. No, no, no. Ask, ask him. Ask him to do it. Ask him to do it. I don't believe in God anymore. Oh, see? You weren't a Christian. I'm not a, I'm not a fool, man. I'm not a fool. Been around the block. Been around the block. So, what will it take? What's that? What is it? Oh, I'm, I don't, I'm not taking anything from anybody. Oh, I don't need any gifts. I'm just here to give. I'm just here to give. I'm just here to give. I'm here to give the truth. What's your truth? Are you willing to talk, person that just... What's your truth? What's your truth? Yeah, what's your truth? You want to share it on the mic? I'm a little scared of mics. I don't like people. Okay, I don't want... Okay. What's your truth? My truth is that I'm here far away from home and I feel hated every single second that I'm here. Why do you feel hated? Because people like you. What have I done to show you hatred right now? You completely invalidated my experience. 
uh, how have I done that? I, I've given you the mic to give you the opportunity to share your, your opinion. I've uh, said no thank you, I didn't do anything mean. Could it be that you're applying maybe past experiences, projecting them onto me? No. Why is that? Because you've said the things you've said. What have I said that uh, was bothersome to you? You've said that homosexuality is a sin and that everyone is sinners, which I personally do not agree with, but... Okay, uh, why, why is it hateful even, so if you say that's my opinion, um, why is it hateful for me to share the opinion of what the Bible says? I'm, not that what the Bible says is an opinion, but you would believe it to be an opinion. Why is that, why is that wrong? What would you say? Why is that wrong? Yeah. For you to share your opinion? Yeah. I haven't said that. I've said it's wrong for you to be hateful about your opinion. Well, how, how's it hateful? That's what I'm trying to understand. Because obviously I'm more than willing to dialogue with you. I'm stepping down from the mic to hear what you have to say. Sure, and I appreciate that. So, um, what's your name? Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. Uh, did you grow up anything with any beliefs? I was raised Catholic, yes. And do you still believe in God? I don't. Okay. Is it because of LGBT related issues? So help me understand. You're saying you feel ha hated every day by me. And um, why? Explain. I mean, go ahead and explain. I'm giving you an opportunity to share. I feel hated by you because people like you have very much hurt me. And being out here saying things that contradict with my own experiences in the sake of your opinion. Okay, so is there objective truth in this world? Or is it all up to people to determine is truth? What? Is who is objective truth? So do you not believe at all that there, so you pretty much given up the idea there's a God? Um, I don't believe in a God. I do believe in power of the universe, but I don't believe that there's a God that controls the universe. Is, created the universe. is murder wrong? Yes. Is rape wrong? Yes. Is uh, hatred towards LGBT people wrong? Yes. Why? Why is it wrong to... Why, like, why is it not a matter of opinion? Why, why is it, why is it full on wrong? Rather. No, I'm saying I'm what I'm trying to do is to show you that when people are their own standard, the standard changes according to whoever has the most power and therefore human life really is meaningless and there is no right and wrong. But when you have the authority of God and his word, he says each person is created in the image of God. It says murder is wrong, rape is wrong. Even hatred towards LGBT people, I'd say is wrong. That's why I'm not out here telling you I hate you or telling you I think you're disgusting. I'm telling you, well, I, I haven't even told you anything in our conversation against, against uh, you know, your identity. What I'm, I'm trying to show you is that if you deny God, you deny even the possibility of there even being a way to say that there is real right and wrong. And therefore, everybody gets to do whatever they want. So if somebody wants to come and hate you for being LGBT, well, they have every right to do so because there's no God to judge them. And if you want to hate somebody for uh, being mean to you, you have every right to do so. No, but I'm telling you that the Bible says and the truth of who God is and the God that created the universe, that there's right and wrong, and when we sin against Him, there's a consequence. Have you ever, have you ever lied in your life? How many lies do you think you've told maybe in your entire life? My entire life? Over a thousand, two thousand? What do you call somebody if they lie to you? I call them a person who just lied to people. I'm pretty sure you might call somebody a liar. No. You would never call somebody a liar? I have never called someone a liar okay. in my life. Well, stand by that, that's not okay, in the yeah. vernacular, people, you know, when sure. would say that's a liar. Such a liar. Yeah. So you are guilty in your life of being a liar at times. Yeah, so, Other people so have called me that, yes. So have, you ever, a liar. have you ever stolen anything? Yes. What do you call somebody that's guilty of stealing? Somebody who stole something. Well, in, in the vernacular, it would be a thief. Sure. Have you ever hated anybody? Okay, Jesus actually said in the Bible that hatred is a very serious thing, that God doesn't want us having hatred in our heart because hatred, even if it doesn't look that bad to the world, unchecked hatred leads to really bad things. So, for example, all murder comes somewhere from 
hatred unchecked. Genocide comes from hatred unchecked. A lot of people walking around out here with hatred, but they have it in check. They're scared that if they act on their hatred, they'll get in trouble. They're scared if they punch somebody that they really don't like, they'll get kicked out of school. So their hatred's in check. But if given the opportunity, it could grow into something disgusting. Just like, and that's in everybody. Um, I hate seeing God's creation being manipulated by Satan, the enemy of God, to turn against the very God that loves his creation and gave his life for them. What exactly do you consider God's creation? Every single person. So I hate seeing the devil twist people's minds and put deception in front of them in such a way that they um, turn against the very God that loves them. That's what I hate. Is the devil to you, is that like a tangible like a person like God is to you? Or is it just kind of a concept? Well, in the Bible, Jesus actually deals with Satan. Jesus uh, was tempted by Satan and Jesus cast out demons. And the Bible says that we're in a, just like there are things happening above us with satellites that we can't see, there's a spiritual reality. You have a spirit and a soul and there are spiritual beings that fell from the very presence of God that don't have bodies. The Bible calls them demons that seek to operate in this world, getting people to turn away from God to spite God and to ultimately if they can lead those very people to hell and that happens through sin through sin I mean just real quick I want to go back to the issue if the God of the Bible okay if the God of the Bible let, let's remove from, even from the equation the LGBT stuff if the God of the Bible were to judge you on his standard of not lying not stealing not hating not lusting would you be innocent or guilty Heaven or hell? I don't believe in heaven or hell. Right, but, but your standards, what you don't believe in, but your standards or the Bible, let's say the Bible standards, because it's not my standards, it's what the Bible says. Well, you uphold the Bible standards, you are a representative. Standing out here, you are a representative as the Bible standards. Okay, so. That's what you've explained. You are a so, representative of the Bible standards. How old are you? Fair for me to call you Bible standards. Okay. So I'm the Bible standard man. Uh, how, how, how old are you? Nothing wrong with that. I'm 17. At 17, don't you think that it would behoove you to have an open mind to the idea that there is a God? Why, why be so close-minded? I'm not to... close-minded. I do, I do, I told you, I keep the idea open. I just... Does it all center around the LGBT I... issue? No, not at all. Are you being honest? Yes. So, for example, if God were to reveal himself to you in a very real way and show you that Jesus loved you, he died for you, and he, God said, but you have to be willing to lay down this part of your identity to me, just like every single person that comes to Christ has to lay down things of their identity that are opposed to him, would you do it? What did you say, you're LGBT? If God were to make it clear to you that he required of you to give that to him, and God were to reveal himself to you and you were to say, I know God is real, would you do it? So that's what I'm trying to say. It can, maybe it, it comes down to that more than you're willing to admit. Because the Bible clearly says that, see, God, God doesn't hate people for being tempted by sin. God, God literally is, well, actually, the Bible would even say something, not even quite that, that, um, all right. It would say that God, because God is actually in his love calling people while they're in their sin to him. So some, if God hated each person that was in sin, he wouldn't be saying, let me come and fix your problems and let me heal you and let me forgive you and will you come to me? So what God hates is, um, is sin and, and people's responses and their choices. So for example, God can hate a person's choice without hating them. Because the Bible says, for God so loved the world that he gave his only son, that God didn't send a son into the world to condemn the world, but in order that the world might be saved through him. Whoever believes is not condemned, but whoever does not believe is condemned already because they have not believed in the name of the only son of God. And the judgment is that the light has come into the world and people love darkness rather than the light. So, so it, I would want to... to as best as I can challenge you that God is real, Jesus loves you, he knows you inside and out, but he wants you to know him and anything that keeps you from that 
whether, you know, from some people it's pornography, for some people it's uh, hatred and anger and unforgiveness, or other people it's even addictions. Whatever it is that keeps you from encountering the love of Jesus ultimately is not a good thing for you. So whether a person's heterosexual, that's why it, it's not like, see, the gospel, everyone's at equal footing in front of the cross. You know, when Jesus died on the cross, he wasn't like, some people need my forgiveness more and you don't need my forgiveness as much. When he was on the cross, it was, this is the punishment for sin in full, that, that yes, your sin is a serious offense to God and God is so good that even though you deny him and you reject him and you want to go after things that the Bible says are wrong, he still loves you and is calling you to himself. See, and I've struggled with a lot of the things that you said I need to put down in front of God or, you know, surrender myself to God. But I've dealt with those within myself and I don't feel that I needed any sort of higher power because I was able, I was strong enough to deal with that within myself. What, traumatic experiences? Traumatic experiences, addictions, all kinds of things like that. Um, well, this is not to put you down and pick on you at all, but at 17, you know, I, I'm a pastor and I deal with people and I see people yo-yo in waves and have good months and bad months. 17 is not a long enough time to say I, I got this uh, covered down because the truth is what you can do is you can cover over things in your life, but God wants to get to the root of those things and he wants to get to the root of them through his love and through the truth and through conviction. I mean, nobody likes the feeling of being convicted by God, but it wouldn't hurt you at all. In fact, it would help you to let God convict you of things that you've, you've done wrong and to open up your eyes to see how he sees your life. Because, yeah, God is not cool with sin and he's not okay with sin, but he's so loving and good that he provides the sacrifice for our sins to be covered and for us to come into relationship with him. We just have to humble ourselves. You know, it sounds like you've gone through some things and you're trying to pick your, your life up, would you, you know, and make something out of your life. But here's the very danger of that very thing. And, uh, you know, it's going to be hard maybe for you. But that, that somewhere is pride. Like no one can come to God um, with pride. I had to come to God with humility. Like every single person out here, it's not like we came and fixed our life and said, okay, God, I'm ready to serve you. It was like, God, here's my life. Like I surrender to you. I need your forgiveness. I need you to clean me. I can't solve it. And you're not going to be able to solve your life without, without Jesus and his love. And, and he loves you so much that, you know, he wants you to hear all of this. And as you, I mean, I would hope and pray that you, you can see that there's no hatred uh, being directed at you, but there's a, real, there's a real war for your soul. Like, you are the prize. Like, every soul is the prize, and the God of this, the Bible calls Satan the God of this world. I don't know if you've ever read the Bible, but that doesn't mean that he's God. It means the, the one in charge of this world system. He is at work seeking to destroy and to deceive people, and without your eyes being opened by Jesus, like, he's going he's gonna to deceive you. And I, I don't want to see that happen. And God doesn't want to see that happen. I have been able to forgive myself for what I've done in the past. And I think that pride goes along with confidence in myself, in knowing that I can do what I have already done in the past. I can take that and I can move on from it because I have pride in my own actions. And I realize that what I have done in the past has been wrong. And what I continue to do in the future it might be wrong. As you said, I am only 17. I've got mistakes to make and things to learn. But there are some mistakes that uh, you can't ever undo. That's a uh, truth. Just like, for example, you don't want to cut off your arm uh, to learn, you know, what it's like to... Um, you don't want to, to go and jump off of a building or uh, be balancing on the edge and get blown off and then be like, well, now I know I never go on a building again, even though I'm all messed up for the rest of my life. So there are choices that you literally cannot, cannot afford to, to make wrong, and God knows that. And the issue is that, um, you see, you can say you forgive yourself, but the way a criminal that goes to court that forgives himself all that matters is if the judge has forgiven them. And there's only one way for a person's sins to be forgiven by the judge, and that's through Jesus. It's through his sacrifice. So you can't come to God and say, God, I've cleaned myself up, because that's like somebody going to a courtroom and saying, well, I've done this and this right, and the judge is going to say, hey, yeah, but you still broke the law, and we're dealing with the laws you broke. And so be, you know, you, like every single person, the Bible says, have sinned and fallen short of God's standard. And that by definition, 
every single person uh, that's not living in right relationship with God is a sinner because sinner, being a sinner is missing the mark and missing the mark uh, manifests itself in different ways. Like there are times where even missing it a little bit with somebody could totally ruin an entire relationship. Other times where, um, you know, just a little, a little judgment, you know, I meet people here, all the, especially last semester, all the time that cheat and do things like that. Yeah, that, yeah the day they get caught, man, that, get kicked out of school for that. You know, that little decision, that little uh, putting a B instead of a C because they, they cheated, you know, could totally alter their entire future. And that's, the Bible says that your sin has to be dealt with through the cross. It can't be dealt with on your own. It can't be dealt with with you trying to reform yourself because the you that's here today um, it still has, a, it's like you, you can't break uh, continuity in your being. You don't have the power to do that. But when we come to God, God gives us a new heart. So that's what it means to be born again. When you come to Jesus, he gives you a brand new heart, a brand new life, new desires. That's why, you know, I, I, you may say like, oh, you're going to tell me, you know, some guy. No, I mean, I have a, a friend um, who God, you know, after years of living a homosexual life, he came in touch with Jesus and got changed it. He got literally changed the desires of his heart because sexual desires, God, God made you more than a sexual being. You have, you're created in the image of God and that goes beyond uh, physical. That goes, so you believe you're created in the image of God? No, I believe I'm created with lovely things. I am smart, I am well educated, I am blessed from the people around me. Not necessarily from Jesus, I am blessed from the people around me. I believe that there's a people and people issue, not necessarily a people with their own God. I do have to go to class. So okay, it was, it was good talking to you. Oh, uh, no, David, it was David, good. I'm sorry. <laughs> it was good, uh, you know, dialoguing yeah, with no, you. I